we are continuing to provide expert small business advice via the engine to help navigate and grow in these unprecedented times. And with so many business owners and employees suffering with the effects of stress, We've invited expert John Shackleton to join business advisor Catherine Sherwood this week to look at how mindfulness can relieve stress and promote resilience. Welcome back to you both. Nice to have you at my place. Absolutely. <laughs> in our home studio. Beautiful. Now, Thanks, John, um, you've coached Olympians, um, highly successful business people, but you've even come found to stress yourself. Yeah. What happens if you don't deal with stress in your experience? Uh, well, it can get very serious. Uh, for me, it went to very serious depression. I was suicidal for a while. And and it. Uh, I think prior to all of that, I saw this as a, a or depression and that sort of thing, anxiety, as a sign of weakness. And in mm. fact, actually, the stronger you are mentally, and this is what I used to coach people on, uh, the stronger you are mentally, the more prone you are to it. So the more, the more powerfully you can control your mind, the worse this gets. The worst the stress comes out in people. Can you so there's explain a lot of 60 or, Well, 60 or 70 percent of the top athletes in the world have extreme anxiety or depression. Because that should they explain want to, control. to you the type of person. Because they want to control, absolutely. So when because things they, are out of your control? Well, they are. Everything's out of your control. <laughs> so there's no point in worrying about it, to be honest. But we like to, we want to control. And, and I would, like 99% of the world, would express myself as a control freak. And yet we don't control anything. We think we control ourselves, but we eat the wrong stuff and we don't exercise. So we have no control <laughs> at all, really. So right. You're so <laughs> right. I might have shown up my true colours before as well. Um, it, it, and COVID has shown us that we can't control anything, you know, massively. Catherine, um, COVID has, of course, created so much stress for small businesses. Um, what effects can stress have on a business if the owner doesn't get this under control? It's really simple. They, they can't plan. Uh, they're not really nice people to be around. They, they react. Um, and uh, they're not actually really aware of what they're doing. They're hearing things differently. Um, and uh, it takes someone like myself to come in and actually have to pull them aside to have those honest conversations with them. Because just rational thinking goes out the window when you're stressed, right? Oh, absolutely. It's reactive, though. It's more reactive than, than mm. rational. Um, you know, you, you just think about things and then you've got a problem on your hand. You know, you shout at people. Mm. I've had to pull an um, uh, employer out of uh, a room diplomatically because he was yelling at an employee and, and just say it's not acceptable behaviour just because you're stressed doesn't mean that you yell and scream and you've got to, you've got to just mm. step away. Step away. Sometimes you don't even see that in yourself though until somebody like you mentions it. That's absolutely um, right. Yeah, John, t tell, talk to us about mindfulness, which is a buzzword and people will go, oh yeah, woo woo, mindfulness. But how can that help with dealing with well, stress? It's a bit like breathing. People think that that's not conducive to stress management, but it is. Oh, absolutely. Um, mindfulness is about taking your uh, attention away from what your mind is telling you. It's very simple. Mm. Um, but doing it consciously and doing it in a way in which you can create neural new neural pathways and what you were just saying about the um, reactivity what mindfulness does is it actually puts a space between stimulus and reaction so you then if you become more mindful and people need to practice something to do that but if you can become more mindful then you don't react to these stimuli you can you have a choice basically and that's what I discovered literally within a week or so of starting to do the exercises. I suddenly realized, oh, I don't have to react when my kids are shouting and screaming or when this client doesn't want to. Oh, I can sit back and observe that. I don't have to jump in. Whereas prior to that, I didn't even realize I had a choice. I just reacted. So if mindfulness is <clears throat> this effective and these techniques are that effective, why aren't we all using them. Why aren't we teaching it in schools? Well, a number of reasons. No, you're absolutely right. And I ask myself that question every single day. Mm. Um, it's a crazy situation that we're not using it. It is being taught in schools now, but in a, I would say, in a diluted fashion in some situations. Uh, first of all, ignorance is the right word. A lack of knowledge might be a better way of putting it. Mm. But people don't understand what it is or how it works. A lot of people have heard the word and used incorrectly, you know, we have to be mindful of this or mindful of that. Well, mindfulness is about not thinking. It's not, so you can't be mindful of something because you have to think of that something to be mindful of it. So 
even the use of the word is wrongly done. So a lot of people don't understand it. Mm. And secondly, a lot of people think there's some sort of magic switch, a bit like a pill. Mm. Oh, if I become more mindful, right, I'll do it now. Yep, right, I'm more mindful. <laughs> okay, that's fixed my problem. Yeah. No, sorry. Next thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Are actually... Are you busy for mindfulness? It, absolutely. I haven't mm. got time to do all of that. And the whole concept is about creating new neural pathways. If we can create peaceful, quiet, relaxed neural pathways, that doesn't mean we switch off and don't do anything. It just means we do what we normally do, peaceful, peacefully, calmly and relaxed, which is, isn't that a better way of doing life generally? <laughs> Instead of reacting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Catherine's nodding away very like relaxedly at the moment. Do you practice mindfulness and what benefits have you noticed? Look, I, I have to be really honest. I, I, I don't practice it as much as I should and I get John constantly checking in on me to make sure that I'm okay. Um, but um, I, I can say that when I do practice mindfulness or for a better word, when I know I need to, uh, which, you know, I know when I'm actually reaching that point, I know I need to go away and put in place uh, those disciplines to just remove myself away and just just be consciously aware of my own space and that, that quietness as well. Um, and uh, I, I find I'm better for it. We need to know more, John. We yeah. need to know what this is. <laughs> Can you give us a technique that might um, explain it or show us and people at home this morning so that we get it? <clears throat> okay, so mindfulness, one way of looking at it is it's the absence of thinking. It's in a sense, the opposite of thinking. So your mind does two things. It, it's aware of stuff mm. and it also, and, and awareness is really important and it thinks. So we want to do the awareness. We've got to bring our attention away from thinking into awareness. So just do me a favor for a moment and, and the people at home can do this as well. If you just close your eyes for a minute and concentrate on every sound you can hear. So those sounds, as soon as you did that, you stopped thinking and mm. noticed the sounds. Mm. So you were in awareness. And you probably also realised that at the same time the mind was trying to intrude and go, what are people thinking? What a waste of time this is. But, so the mind was still there talking to you, but actually your awareness was what they call dominant. So you were dominantly aware. What we do with mindfulness is uh, train ourselves to do that a lot. You, most people realize also that when they do that, life seems to become pretty quickly uh, much more relaxed and quiet. Mm. <laughs> it uh, was very quiet when I closed my eyes just now and I've got, I don't know, seven people in the room and a dog. And... <laughs> and you be, right, and what happens is your attention from being out there goes in here yeah. and suddenly we become, life's much more in control. I'm yeah. not panicking, nothing's... So there is a little bit of an instant switch, but what we have to do is learn to do that in such a way that we create those neural pathways so it's life is permanently like that. And maybe don't close your eyes while driving. If you're going to try that at home. <laughs> there are <laughs> techniques which don't involve eyes yeah, closed. Absolutely. Yes. Um, resilience, another buzzword. Yeah. How does mindfulness, practicing mindfulness, help our resilience? Well, you? resilience is the ability to bounce back. Mm. And so when we're stressed, we don't bounce back. We usually attack or we run away. Bouncing back has just is basically the result of being more mindful. Mm -hmm. So when when we become mindful, when we train ourselves to do that, then what happens is we um, we, we become resilient by default. It mm. just happens by itself. So practice, practice, practice. There is no there's no quick way and there's no simple way of doing it. You have to do the exercises every single day. But it happens, right? Absolutely. We're only talking and, 10 minutes. And, a, and accountability from the coach. Yes, yeah. you need somebody to smack you on the nose if you're not. <laughs> Do you have any final thoughts, Catherine? Yeah, look, I, I just want to say that, you know, in, in my personal experience, if, if things are suffering in your business, they're also suffering in your personal life too. So address what's important and, and deal with it and, and focus on it and get the right people around you like John um, and the rest will just slot into place. It really does. Lovely to both uh, to see you both. I feel more relaxed and we've had a wee laugh. It's been a lovely wee Great. segment. Nice to see you. Oh, thanks, Kelly. And for more small business advice, you can get in touch with Catherine at theengine.biz and to learn more about the power of mindfulness from John, go to his website, johnshack.com forward slash e hyphen books. 